so many people um, don't wear seatbelts, uh, especially on the reservation. People just they think, oh, that's a white thing to do. That's what Washichu people do, you know. And then and then they'll be driving their cars and and they'll have their baby sitting, you know, at, at the steering wheel even. Yeah, I, I've seen this happen before, uh, where I was a passenger sitting in the back seat. I had my seatbelt on and. And this young couple was sitting up front, and they had their no, no nobody was wearing seatbelts, and uh, they had their baby daughter. Um, they she, the guy just he, the guy was driving, and he just he, you know he thought it was cute that you know he he put her in the driving wheel to make it look like she was driving the car. And we were going down the road, seventy five miles an hour, and I was like, holy shit! If we get in a car wreck. Them three are dead, yeah, and and people just don't think of these things. I mean, I'm guilty of it too, you know. In in my younger years, uh, I but I never said that was a white thing. I just said, ah, that's not cool. You know, I'm a wild man. You know, I'm a rock and roll guy. You know, and uh, and, and then I realized, hey, you know what? That, that that's it's a painful way to go. You know, so um, I didn't really um, I didn't really care for it. Uh, that attitude, yeah. So I started wearing seatbelts, um, but it is. I, I think it's really, really, really important to wear seatbelts. People need to realize that when you're in a car, basically you're you're in a tin can, and if that tin can crashes and you're you're not, you know, tied down in any way, just imagine these blenders. You know, when you when you put fruit in the blender and whatever, you know, you're just going all over the place and you're getting cut up in the process. This is what's happening. Yeah, and and, and this car, the car is going to spin and spin and spin and you have no control. You can't stop. You go wherever the car throws you. And so, um, uh, you know, you die. And and, and I, I bring this up because I, I, I really think this is important. Um, and there's, because, you know, that it's so simple. It's so simple of a thing that you just grab this this, this doohickey and put it over your waist and your your stomach and what your lap and whatnot and connect it to the other side and you're, you're, you're protected. So if you wreck, hey, you're, you're not going to be thrown around. Huh? You're not going to be thrown around. And your chances of survival in the car crash are dramatically, drastically higher than when you don't. So off the top of my head, I know many people on the reservation who most likely would still be alive today if they had only worn their seatbelts. And most of them are young people. Yeah, they 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 think that this is you know that they, they don't it's not cool to wear seatbelts and such. I mean, even I think it was a couple of years ago or so um, where um, a young couple, very young couple, just. Uh, I don't know. I think she might have been in her younger twenties, and he too. And they had, they just had a little kid, and um, miraculously, yeah, the the kid survived. And uh, the the guy, the father, I don't know what happened. I don't think he died, but he got messed up pretty bad uh, physically. And the wife died. Young wife died, and. Uh, they're from the west end of uh, Shan River Sioux Reservation. I read about this in the news, and I, re- I, re- I read that they 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 they're, they lost their car control on the gravel road. And see, a lot of young people don't realize that gravel roads. You gotta watch your speed. You can't you can't drive on a gravel road like you can on the pavement because if you come around a corner, I mean on the curve. And it, and there's a, the right amount of rocks on that gravel road, the right amount of gravel rocks, you could literally slide off. And once you start sliding, you know, as soon as you hit the, the dirt, see, this is going to cause your car to flip and you start rolling. And that's what happened to this young couple. Their car, he lost control because of the gravel. They were going too fast. And the car hit, as soon as the car got off the gravel and hit, normal ground that suddenly stops the car and then he started flipping yeah started flipping over and over and over and over and and it's just like there's no time to think there's no time to scream there's no time to say oh shit 
You know, it, it, it all happens in a matter of a second and you're gone. It's so important to wear seatbelts. Yeah, and uh, people who don't, you're really, you're really taking an unnecessary gamble with your life, you know. It's just a public service message I want to put out there, yeah. Wear your seatbelts, that's really important. And holiday time is coming and roads are going to be getting slippery because, you know, people are going to be going to the bigger towns and going shopping and then, they might drive back. I mean, during the daytime, the road might thaw out because of all the cars driving on the road. But as soon as the, as soon as it gets nighttime, you know that that's going to start to ice up. So, you drive on the road. You think you think everything looks good. And then all of a sudden, your car spinning. You're not wearing any seat belts. Everybody's going to get messed up. Yeah, and so there might be some some deaths, and that was totally could have been avoided if you just wore seatbelts and fasten down your kids you know so many Indians just let their kids even babies they just let them crawl all over the car and and you know and and that's just taking a huge ass chance and you know what people I know I know people from my generation you know we could say well hey you know my my parents never did that I remember laying in the back the back window <laughs> and I'm guilty of that too, yeah. Laying in the back window, looking up at the sky, and <laughs> blocking the whole view from the, from my mom, <laughs> and stuff like that. But let me tell you something, people. The cars that were made back in the 1960s, them cars could take a hit, yeah. Those cars were made out of metal, so they could take much more of a hit. So if you get you get in a car wreck with one of those cars, yes, it gets all crashed and everything. But you know, it's in some many instances you can still drive it away from the scene because it's so damn uh, tough. It's it, it, everything is metal, yeah. But today's cars are are like you know, like crumpling a piece of paper. Yeah, over here in in Germany, you know, with with the autobahn, you, there's certain parts of the autobahn where you can you can drive as fast as you want. So you see guys cruising by with these really revved up sports cars going 200 miles an hour, maybe even faster than that. I'm not kidding. It's like a racetrack, and and you know, I'm sitting there going 75, 85 miles an hour, straddling the middle lane there. And out of nowhere, you know, this holy shit, the guy, it's just, it's just gone, yeah? So you could tell the guy is going at least 180, 200 miles an hour. That's incredibly fast, yeah? And and uh, it, it's really aggressive on the Autobahn, yeah? It is really aggressive. You have to pay attention. Otherwise, you know, you could end up in the, end up in the ditch, yeah, and uh, some some people just overestimate. The next thing you know, there's there's you know somebody might 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 uh, stall out in the middle of the the uh, the uh, autobahn, and you come over this hill and you don't catch it in time, and then poof, you're rear-ending them, and you see those kind of accidents. Nobody lives because the 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 front end of the car in the back is totally, you know, it's just all the way back to the trunk. And the car that he ran into, yeah, from the, from that car's trunk all, all the way to the engine. It's just like a sandwich, huh? like two accordions at the end. And, uh, and nobody lives through that. Nobody. Because th- these cars are, are, just, are just so... They might be energy efficient and fuel efficient, but they're not crash efficient. That's the thing. People don't take that into consideration. Yeah, I think there should be a crash efficient factor. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> you're you're really putting your life in the, in, you know, in in, a, in the driver's trust when you get into a car, and uh, people just don't 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 realize that. Yeah. So anyway, if you, if you can do things to uh, take preventive measures, then you should do them. And one of those is wearing a seatbelt. Yeah, 
and putting your kid in restraining restraining seats. That's really, really important in, because today's cars, they can't take a crash. They can't take a hit. You know, these car, today's cars, and you come running into a cow, shit, the cow's just going to stand there, and, and your car is accordion, and everybody else in it is a goner. I had a 19, what was it, a 1973 Chevelle two-door Malibu with a lime green bottom and a white top. And uh, my uncle uh, put a, uh, what is what what engine did he put in a, he put in a race car engine anyway. Um, he had a race car that crashed. Yeah, he, 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 he raced his cars in the Black Hills. And uh, he had, he one of his cars crashed, but the engine was still good. And my car, the engine was getting ready to call it quits. So he said, why don't, why don't I put a uh, salvy of this engine and put it in there? And um, so I said, yeah, I said, he said, it'll fit. He said, it, it'll, it'll barely fit, but it'll fit. He said, <laughs> so he said, okay, let's do it. Gee, many crackers. That there's a big difference. The speedometer wasn't correct, yeah, because we had to uh, figure that out. Yeah, so we were like, okay, if we go, because at that time in America, the speed limit was 55 miles an hour. That's 88 kilometers an hour in, in metric. I remember that because in, in the cars, you know, in the, in the uh, late 70s and the early 80s, the cars, they have the 55 on, on, on the top and on the bottom, they have the 88, yeah, the metric. So I remember that, 55, 88. Anyway, um, so we had to uh, find out, you know, at what point are we going 55 miles an hour? And it was about 48, yeah? Because if I went 55 miles an hour, it was more like 62 or something like that. <laughs> I got pulled over by the cops one time because of that, yeah? I said, cops saying, hey, you know how fast you were going back there? I said, 55. No, he said you were going about sixty, sixty-five. He said I said no way. I said here, here it says fifty-five. I said you better get your uh, your uh, what do you call it? your speedometer uh, adjusted. He said because it's not right. And I said ah yeah okay because I said there's a different engine in there. I said it's a, a engine that used to be in a race car. So uh, we I don't know how to do that. I said <laughs> it was a really good engine though. Yeah. But I was in that car. Me and my best friend, we were uh, we had to go up to Standing Rock to pick somebody up. That's a, another Indian, another Lakota speaking reservation. We went to this small town called Bullhead, South Dakota, and uh, we went there. And uh, gee, it was about two two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it was summertime. Yeah, it was summertime. And so uh, we you know, we we had a uh, we had to pick somebody up. It was kind of an emergency. So we went over there. We did our business, and then we came back. And we came over this hill, and this was a gravel road, so I was driving about 45 miles an hour. It was moonlight, yeah, so you could see everything. We came around this hill. There was a cow standing right in the middle of the road. <laughs> Boom, shit, we hit that cow head on. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we went sliding and spinning and you know circles and, and, and I mean we the car wasn't going you know like that car crash it was spinning yeah it was just spinning <laughs> and we ended up in the ditch and we're like Jesus Christ <laughs> went out and checked the car and they said, everything okay so yeah it just seems to be a small dent in the in the the hood but it's really a dinky one and said maybe that was already there so one headlight was pushed the other direction yeah so we had to we had to uh somehow try to move it back yeah and then um uh we were looking at the car and everything and the, the tires were okay and um there's just some cow hair yeah cow hide on the on the front end of the car so <laughs> We we went to the road and we we're looking to see if that cow was doing anything. And the cow was just standing there, chewing weed. Yeah, <laughs> it didn't even phase the cow. It just kind of uh, like that. Yeah, 
hear us guys went spinning like crazy. And so we got back, you know, we were able to drive the car back up to the ditch and it was like, well, it looks like everything's okay. Let's just continue on. You know, if something happens, we'll pull over again. So we took off and everything was okay. Now that was a 1974 Chevelle Malibu or 73 Chevelle, Mal- Chevelle Malibu. Or was it 71? Might have even been a 71. Yeah, maybe it was a 71 Chevelle Malibu. That what car was built like a tank. That was all metal. Like I said, we hit a cow at 30, 45 miles an hour. And still, nothing. Yeah? The, the, we, it, it, if there was a dent, it was small. We couldn't see it in the nighttime. And the, it, didn't mix, it didn't mess up the uh, front, front wheel axle or front wheel anything. The, the, it didn't puncture anything. The engine block was totally okay. So we continued on. We made it home. No problem. Next morning came. We, my uncle took a look at it. And he was like, oh, everything is okay. It's a tiny dent, but nobody can see that. And that was hitting a cow at 45 miles an hour dead on. Didn't even bother the cow. Yeah, it threw us off the road, but the, the car was in perfect shape. Now, if I had a 1984 whatever, if I had a 1984 K car, for those of you that may, might remember what those were like, that car would, probably would have been a sandwich. And uh, since my friend and I were not wearing seat belts, we probably would have been sandwiches too. Yeah. <laughs> so it really. It, that's why I say wear your seat belts. You know, you, you don't if your if your parents or if you hear your grandpa or your uncle say, "Oh, back in when I was in high school, we didn't wear seat belts and shit, we got in wrecks every weekend. Nothing happened to us." Those cars were built. Yeah, they were built to last. Yeah, the, they were the engines were more high quality, but everything is metal. That's why it costs a lot to you know to, to uh, keep them going and also they use a lot of gas because of that so they're not too energy efficient but they're built to take a hit yeah so uh, when you hear your uncles and your grandpas and say well they never wore seat belts and everything was okay you have to remember those cars could take a hit the cars today they can't Shit, you just barely bump into something and half the car falls off even though it's a, a brand new car yeah, so you have to keep that in mind. That's why I'm advising, please wear your seatbelts. Okay, now I hope that I hope I made my point. <laughs> I don't want to have to say this again, so make sure you pay attention. <laughs> oh man, I just I just too many people die because of that. Yeah, there was a real nice young lady from the Pine Ridge Sioux Reservation. Uh, named uh, Sue Ann Bicro, and she was a basketball star. This lady excelled in all sports. She was a real athlete and a half. And uh, she was amazing at everything she did, baseball, volleyball, football, basketball, everything. She was a one hell of an athlete. And uh, every state in in, uh, in America, they all they all have their basketball competitions, and and uh, they have their awards, you know, like Mr. Basketball, Mrs. Basketball, Miss Basketball, you know, for that year. And that uh, the year she was a senior in high school, uh, she was uh, she she was chosen to be Miss Miss South Dakota Basketball of that year. And the award ceremony was going to take place in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Now, Sioux Falls is clear over on the east side of South Dakota, on the southeast side. Pine Ridge is on the west, the very the, the southwest part of the state. Yeah. So, uh, they decide, her and her mother decided to uh, drive early. You know, they were going to leave around four o'clock in the morning. So they were. It's about a five-hour drive to get to uh, Sioux Falls. Plus, they're an hour ahead, too. Yeah, you go through an hour change. South Dakota, half of South Dakota, is, is, is the time zone runs right through there. So um, I, so they were going, and I don't know how far they got, but they, uh, she wanted to drive. Yeah, she, she insisted that 
you know, she wanted that she drive. And uh, they uh, they went over a bridge, and these bridges on the interstate highways, hi, interstate highways for those of you in, in other parts of the world, interstate highways are are specially built highways in America. They go through all all states, and um, they uh, they don't go into any cities. So if you want to go into a city, you have to get off. You have to get on an exit. Yeah. So. Uh, so this way you can travel, you know, nonstop, really long distance, and the speed limit is a little bit faster. And there's there's gas stations, there's rest areas, fast food places and stuff. You can hotels and stuff like that that you can pull over to when you get tired. So anyway, um, these the, the highways are built with a different um, uh, material on the surface, yeah. So when it rains, the interstate highways you get slippery really fast. Yeah, and it, it, it's, it's interesting. And the bridges are um, also very misleading when it's winter time. It could look totally clear, but as soon as you, if you hit it and you 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 come at a certain angle, you know, or if you just tap your steering wheel a little bit, you, all of a sudden you're spinning. It's black ice. Yeah. So this is what happens. She came on this bridge and, and tapped the um, the wheel somehow and it started to spin. Next thing you know, they were in the ditch and the car spun several times. Uh, I should say it flipped several times and uh, she died at the scene. The car landed on top of her, which means she got thrown out of the car and then the car kept spinning and landed on top of her at one point and smashed her. That's how she died. Because she was not wearing a seatbelt. And I thought, man, what a shame. I know that's sad. You know, this lady was a role model to a lot of younger Indian kids. She didn't drink. She didn't smoke. You know, she wasn't uh, doing drugs or anything like that. She was really a role model. She was an honor student. And so it really, really, you know, it, it, it's like, man, if she only wore a seatbelt, she would still be alive, most likely. Yeah? So it was really sad. It, it was it, it was a very sad time uh, for Indian people. I remember that because uh, everybody knew who this lady was. She really made a name for herself. You know, it's just something so simple. You know, as put wearing a seatbelt can change everything. Yeah, so that's that's why I cannot stress that enough. Yeah. Okay, so enough of my ranting and raving of wearing sweet belt, sweet belts. <laughs> Maybe that's what they should call it. Maybe people will want to wear it. Yeah, put some designs on it, and you know, put it put it where it says Mister Wonderful or. Like it's, you know, those sashes that beauty queens wear? Yeah, like that. They should make them, those seatbelts look like that. <laughs> Driving down the car, Mr. Universe. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. It, if it'll get you to wear a seatbelt, then let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let me let me take a tiny little music break and, and uh, then I'll come right back. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> 